16, the word of the Lord is says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you so very much. Tell your neighbor, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Out of all the things to talk about, I think it's worthy to talk about the Lord. Beloved, I've discovered that so many people today, so many of us, waste our breath, energy, and time talking about things that's worth nothing. I try it again. Too many of us waste our breath, energy, and time talking about things that's worth nothing. Third time is a charm. Too many of us, some of us even in the house this morning, we waste our breath, energy, and time talking about things that's really not worth nothing. Uh, it was the late, great James Brown in that 1972 smash hit that said it best when he came out with that song called Talking Loud. <laughs> but come on, help me somebody. But I ain't saying nothing. Too many of us and people today, we literally waste our breath, energy, and time talking about stuff that's really not worth talking about. Most people today waste time talking about plans, places, and people. Sometimes you run across people that's always talking about plans. They always planning to do something, planning to go somewhere, planning on how they're going to get it done. But here's God's word for somebody today that's always planning. God says, quit talking about your plan and put a plan together to accomplish your plan. I wish I had some help in this house. In other words, beloved, quit talking about what you're going to do. Tell your neighbor, go ahead and do it. Do I have a witness here? If you want a better life, live a better life. Talk to me, somebody. If you need another job, go look for one. Fill out the application. Set up an interview. If you need to get your resume together, tell your neighbor, then get it together. If you need to go back to school, go back to school. Apply for the financial aid. Apply for the grant. Take a loan out if you have to. But show God you're serious about what you're praying for. Because how many of you know when you show God you're serious about him, that's when God will show you he's serious about you. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? We waste time sometimes talking about plans. But then we waste time talking about places. Can I hear the church shout places? You hear people all the time say, I just want to be in a place where I'm happy. But don't realize you're not going to ever be happy because everywhere you go, you keep up most heck, H-E double hockey stick than anybody else. People say, I want to be in a place of joy, but you keep junk up everywhere that you go. You say, I want to be in a place of peace, but you cause problems everywhere that you go. How many of you know if you want to be in a certain place, tell your neighbor you got to be in a certain place. And then we sometimes waste time talking about people. Can I hear the church shout people? Yeah, sometimes we waste time talking about people. You hear folks say, boy, if I was like Oprah, I'd be all right. If I had Oprah money, I wouldn't have to worry about a thing. Tell your neighbor, quit telling the story. 
You can handle Oprah's money. Talk to me, somebody. You can't. Some of, come on, help me, y'all. Some of us can't handle the little bank account that we got right now. Won't tithe, do have a witness here. Won't give, start looking mean mugging when it come to offering time. Listen to folk that get in your mind, tell you, child, I wouldn't give all my money to that church. Child, I wouldn't give them a dime, child. If I can't see where my money going, I ain't gonna get it. That's why they broke and that's why you broke because two broke go always stay broke. Do I have any help in this house? People say, I want to be like Oprah. Listen, you can't handle the hundred dollars you got in your pocket right now. <laughs> do I have a witness here? You got to be willing to do what Oprah has done in order to get to where Oprah is. I hear young people sometimes, young athletes, they say, I want to be like Mike. I want to be the next Kobe. I want to be like LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. I want to be Ray Lewis. I want to be Odell Beckham Jr. Well, ain't nothing wrong with what you want. The question is, are you willing to pay the price that they paid? Talk back to me if you can. Are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to go without? Do I have any help in the building this morning? What kind of exercising are you doing? What kind of film are you studying? What kind of weights are you lifting? Are you running? Are you exercising? If you want to be like somebody great, you got to do what great folk do. <laughs> do I have a witness here? Then you hear people say, I want to be, I saw heard the young guy, the guy on Facebook, Jacquees, he disrespected Keith Sweat. Y'all saw it on Facebook. He said, I'm the king of R&B. <laughs> Don't get quiet right there. <laughs> And Keith Sweat bagged up and said, you the king of R&B, but I've sold 30 million records. If you go be the king, then you ought to be the king. Let me see what records you done sold. Do I have any help in this house? All I'm trying to tell you, beloved, don't waste your breath, energy, and time talking about stuff you know and God know you ain't going to do nothing about. But there is somebody that's worth talking about. His name is Jesus. Anybody here know he is something to talk about? Anybody know he is worthy to talk about? Matter of fact, if you want to have a conversation, just start talking about Jesus. Young lady, if you want to date somebody, I dare you to bring up Jesus and see what he got to say. My brother, I don't care how fine she is, slim in the waist, pretty in the face she is, talk to me somebody. But if you really want to know if she's wife material, start talking about Jesus and see where the conversation go. He's somebody to talk about. Can I tell you why Jesus is worthy to talk about? about this season is because he's a sovereign God. Anybody know what sovereign means? Sovereign means God is smart. Talk to me somebody. He's so smart that God know the answer before the problem ever showed up. I wish I had some help in this house. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's a sovereign God. He got the answer before your problem ever show up. Is this microphone working? I don't got but one amen right there. I tried one more time. He's a sovereign God. He already got your answer before your problem ever showed up. Do I have any help in this house? You got to know what to give God praise for. Beloved, we work backwards. We try to get the answer after the problem has showed up. But we serve a God that already got the answer before the problem ever got there. Let me call the witnesses. Y'all sitting quiet this morning. Come here, Abraham. You remember when he took his only begotten son, Isaac, up on the mountain to be sacrificed. And when they got there, Isaac said, Daddy, I see the wood. He said, I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, son, don't worry about it. He said, the God that I serve, he will provide himself. Wish I had a Bible reader here. A sacrifice for us. And God told Abraham, look over your shoulder. And he looks over his shoulder and saw a ram caught in the thicket of the bush. Now the question is, when did the ram ever show up? I tell you when it showed up, the ram was already there before Abraham ever made it to the mountain. 
you ought to give God praise that we serve a sovereign God. He, he's not sleeping on the job. He's wide awake. He that keepeth this right hell, neither slumber nor sleep. He already got your answer before your problem ever showed up. I need another witness. I got about five, eight mans. I'm trying to get up to 10 this morning. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo. When they were thrown in that fiery furnace, any Bible readers here? And the Bible said Nebuchadnezzar looked over the banister, said, I thought I put in three. He said, but now I see four. And the fourth looked like the son of God. The question is, when did God show up in the fire? Can I give you the answer? He never showed up in the fire. He was the fire. How many of you know, beloved, God is a fire all by himself. He's the same fire that met Moses on the backside of a mountain and told him to take off your shoes because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Do I have any help in this out? He's the same fire that got inside of Jeremiah when Jeremiah got tired of preaching, tired of pastoring God's folk. They wouldn't say amen. They wouldn't get engaged. They wouldn't give God glory. They wouldn't give their tithe. They wouldn't have to have a heart to serve the Lord and Jeremiah said I ain't going down there no more but he looked back over his life and saw how good God had been to him and I ought to have at least 10 folks and I'll make 11 that can just take a moment right where you are and look back over your life and see how good God has been to you and when I feel like quitting tell your neighbor I can't quit when I feel like throwing in the towel tell your neighbor I ain't throwing in the towel he said it's like fire shut up in my bow and he's the same fire that pulled them out of the fire how many of you know beloved he's a sovereign God he got your answer before your problem ever showed up and one Friday on a hill called Calvary I ought to have some help in this house let me try it again on a Friday on a hill called Calvary let me try this thing one more time. I'm waiting on somebody to get happy here. One Friday on a hill called Calvary. He already knew Adam was sin in the garden. That's why Revelation 13 and 8 said, The Son of Man was slain before the foundation of the world. In early Sunday morning, he got up. Somebody ought to shout it one more time. He's a sovereign God. He got the answer to your problem before your problem ever knew there was an answer. If there's anybody worth talking about during the Christmas season, you heard Deacon Crowley. His name is Jesus. Do I have a witness? And if there's ever been a text teller made to teach us, train us, and tutor us about the fact why he's somebody to talk about is what he says in conversation with this man named Nicodemus. He says to Nicodemus, Nick, I'm worth talking about because I'm really the only person you know that'll put his money where his mouth is. Can a church shout, he will put his money where his mouth is. It said, for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let, let me try another street. Y'all a little quiet this morning. We live in a world where all of us need somebody we can lean and depend on. I try it again. We live in a time where people are looking for somebody they can lean and depend on. I got a few more amens right there. Let me try it one more last time. There are some women here looking for a man <laughs> that she can lean and depend on. There's some brothers here looking for a woman that he can lean and depend on. 
whether you know it or not, accountability and dependability equals trustability. God is looking for some saints and some soldiers that are accountable, dependable, and trustable. I wish I had two or three amens in the house right there. And beloved, if you can't get nothing else for Christmas, ask God to give you the best Christmas gift there is. Some accountability, dependability, and some trustability. And it's wrapped up in Jesus alone. Matter of fact, if you ever look at Jesus, he has a record resume and the reputation of being one that will put his money where his mouth is. In other words, whatever Jesus mentioned, he's going to make. Whatever he said, he's going to show. And whatever he promised, he will perform. Let me call another witness to the stand. Come here, Father Abraham. You remember God promised Abraham he'd have children as many as the stars in the sky. And God made good on the promise. Because when they came out of Egypt into the promised land, it was too many of them for any man to count. You remember, beloved, it was Ezekiel at a valley full of dead and dry bones. God promised him, he said, Zeke, if you just preach the word, you ain't got to give them no motivation or speak money comma than seven steps to financial security and ten steps to a better life. Just preach the word. And I'll mix my Holy Spirit with the word. And I'll cause dead and dry bones to get up and so start the living again. He'll do just what he said. He said one Friday to the Jews and the Romans, he said, you can go on and destroy this body if you want to, but in three days. He said, I'll raise it back up. And how many of you know, early Sunday morning, he made good on the promise. I'm just trying to give you time to realize what kind of God that you serve. You serve a God that'll put his money where his mouth is. Whatever he said, that settles it. He said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He becomes good on the promise in the text when he meets Nicodemus. In other words, here's the shout of the scripture, y'all. God showed his love to us by showing it to Nicodemus, by giving Nicodemus an opportunity to meet him. You want to know why, beloved, you can't take it for granted that you're sitting where you're sitting right now? Because chances are, for some of us, we may not be sitting there on next Sunday. You ought to learn how to thank God for what he's given you, our AT, right now. Do I have a witness here? You ought to thank God, beloved. It ain't because you got up and came to church. No, it's because the Lord woke you up and it was the Lord that brought you here. I see the question, but I see the quote. Stay right there. The question, Nicodemus comes to Jesus. And in essence, he says, Jesus, you read it in verse number one. He says, in essence, Jesus, how are you able to do all of these miracles? God got to be with you, man. In other words, Nicodemus was really saying without verbally asking directly, he said, Jesus, I really want a miracle in my life, but I just don't want you to be my master. <laughs> I want to have some help in this house. And therein lies my brothers and my sisters. You go appreciate this message late on in your life. Therein lies the blessing and the burden of humanity. <laughs> The blessing of humanity and society, y'all, everybody is looking for God. The burden is most folk that's looking for God just want what he got in his hand, but don't want the Lord to get in their heart. I wish I had some real saints in this house right here. And how many of you know we are taught that when you get Jesus in your heart, you got access to everything he got in his hand. Nicodemus 
said, I know God with you because of all the miracles that you're doing. I see the question, and here's the issue. John is revealing Jesus as a universal savior. God's love is so strong that he didn't just come to save the black man, the white man, the yellow man, the European, the Asian man. He came to save all men. Talk to me somebody. And when Jesus comes, he provides the avenue that all of us can get our blessing. The question is, are we willing to walk the path? <laughs> Nudge your name and ask him, but are you willing to walk with the Lord? Do I have any help in this house? Nicodemus, he said, you perform these miracles. I know God is with you. Lord, I want a miracle for myself. But he never wanted God for himself. Are y'all in here? In other words, beloved, the question is, but why would he ask for that? Why would he not ask for the master over the miracle and rather wanted the miracle over the master? It's sitting in your Bible. If you look at his title, it said Nicodemus was a Pharisee. <laughs> And Nicodemus was a leader. In other words, when you come to Sunday school, you'll learn in Bible study that a Pharisee were those religious groups that believed in living by the law, but not with love. But Jesus said, love ought to be the reason that you live by the law. Do I have any help in this house? He's a leader. Watch this, which means he's also on the Sanhedrin Council. That's the governmental council of the time. In other words, hear these things and threads, y'all, that I tie together. In other words, beloved, Nicodemus represent those that had religion but no relationship. And can I tell you, beloved, I don't know if that went over your head or not, but we live in a time today where there are so many people that have religion but no relationship. See, religion simply means this. I know when I'm supposed to come to church. I know I'm supposed to come to Bible study. I know I'm supposed to come to Sunday school. I know what to say. I know how the song go. I know how I'm supposed to dress. I know what Big Mama and them did. I know what Popo and them did. That's called religion, but relationships say I come to church because I love God. I give because I've been born again. I wish I had some help in it out. I serve because God has been good to me. God said religion ain't worth a quarter if you don't have no relationship. But when you have a relationship, and I don't know what's on some of y'all mind this morning, but when you have a relationship with God, don't nobody have to pump, prime, or push you to give God praise. All you got to have is a flashback and a memory of what God has already done in your life. Do I have any help in this house? If you got a relationship, you'll remember when you was broke, but he kept your life still on you. You'll remember when they laid you off but you still had food in the pantry. You'll remember when your car was on E but you made it from point A to point B on fumes until you was able to put some gas in there. When you got relationship you remember it was the Lord that took care of your children. It was the Lord that took care of your mama. It was the Lord that took care of your daddy and it's the Lord that's taking care of you right now. That may be the reason, y'all, that some folk come to church and sit like a knot on the law. <laughs> Won't praise the Lord, won't clap, won't say thank you, won't ever stand up, won't give, won't tithe, won't serve, won't get involved, do I have any help in this house? It could be it's because they got religion, but they ain't got no relationship. But when God has been good to you, I don't care who watching, my hand got to go up. 
I don't care who listening. I got to tell God, thank you. You ain't that hard. You can't give God praise. You ain't that gangster. You can't tell God, thank you. You ain't that thuggish. You can't give God glory. Is there anybody here that can tell God, thank you? I got a relationship. My brother, maybe one of the reasons you ain't got a woman is because you won't praise him. My sister, maybe the reason you don't have a good man, you won't praise him. How many of you know the old folk had it right? When praises go up. Notice, he comes to Jesus, I'm cutting it off, by night. That's a picture perfect picture, you all of man's pride but the master's position he comes to Jesus by night the pride of man is this y'all is that I'm too cool to come to Christ in public I just want to keep it on the down low in private See how y'all quiet right there? Man's pride said, you know, it, 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 ain't, it ain't hip. It ain't, it ain't fashionable. It's not, it's not cool to talk about God, to live for God in public. So I'm going to keep my relationship on the down low in private. But God said, I don't like folks like that. God said, if you can act a fool for the devil in public, you can be faithful for God in public too. If you can be gangster in public, you can give God glory in public too. If you thug life in public, you ought to lift your thug life hand with your tattoo and open up your mouth and tell God, thank you in public. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I'm taking it public. But then I see the master's position. Notice he came to Jesus at night. You missed it. Let me pray for why I tried one more time. He came to Jesus at night. You still ain't there, are you? He came to Jesus at night. In other words, if he came to Jesus at night, it simply meant Jesus was available even at night. You got to know when to give God praise. You want to tell the Lord, thank you, that God is available just like 7-Eleven. He's a 24-hour God. It don't matter if you come in the day, if you come in the evening, if you come at night. But tell your neighbor, lay down your pride and just call. He's always available for any and everybody. Anybody that dies and goes to hell, it is one million percent they fall. Every day a person lives, I wish I had some help in this house, you got equal opportunity to submit and surrender to the same God. Even if you live in a distant island where they don't even speak a foreign or, or English language, they can look at nature and see God's hand in nature and it's enough evidence to know they got to be a God somewhere. I'm done, but here's God's quote. Notice what Jesus says to him. He didn't say, show you right. Yeah, I got power to do all these miracles. He never got the big head and said, yeah, those miracles, that was me. Jesus said, except you be born again. You can't enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, I didn't ask you that, God. I asked you, how can I get a miracle? Jesus said, except you be born again, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. The word miracle is first mentioned in the Bible in Exodus 7 and 9 when Moses and Pharaoh had a miracle working contest to see whose God was the greatest. The Hebrew word for miracle is the word mopheth. The Greek word for miracle is simeon. S-E-M-E-I-O-N. Sigma, eta, mu, epsilon, iota, omicron, nu. Both of them mean a sign. In other words, God says to Nicodemus, he said, listen, son, miracles are nothing but a sign to get your attention 
for you not to fall in love with the miracle that was work, but fall in love with the miracle worker. <laughs> Ought to have some help in his house. In other words, he said, I really don't like performing miracles because folks will run after the miracle that was work and they'll leave behind the miracle worker. To appreciate a miracle, Jesus said, you got to be born again. Yeah. Be careful running to miracle healing services. Ought to have some help in this house. If they got that much power to heal folk, and I'm not denying folk can get healed, but if they got that much power, meet me at UMC. Show up at the Baptist emergency room. I wish I had two or three witnesses here. Show up at the ICU and put UMC out of business. Go in there and sprinkle your little oil and your little handkerchief over everybody and help them get up and go on and live their life. Jesus said, you got to be born again to appreciate the miracle. Don't have a witness. He put his money where his mouth is. I got to land the plane. But he'll give you a path that's so easy to follow. He says to Nicodemus, he said, except you be born again. He said, for God so loved the world, he gave. Tell your neighbor, he's done his part. Tell your other neighbor, he showed enough did. His only begotten son. Your part, whosoever believe. Stop right there. Can the church shout, believe? Believe. Pistis in the Greek, which means to have faith. In other words, God said the path to experience my miracle working power. You got to believe by faith. Do I have a witness? I know that don't mean much to y'all. Sometimes you don't know what to shout on or when to shout, but there was some word there to shout on right there. That if you really want to be blessed by God, if you really want to see God move in your life, Jesus said to Nicodemus and saying to us, believe. I tried one more time. He didn't say you got to pay a certain amount of money. He never told Nicodemus go home and learn Psalms number 23. He never said you had to be on a church roll at Cherry Grove for so many years after the right hand of fellowship and the baptism. The only thing he said to Nicodemus is believe. Do I have a witness here? How many of you know, beloved, that if you just learn how to believe, somebody here know God, he will. Won't he will? Work a miracle in your life. Am I preaching to the right crowd? You know, being a Christian, being saved, it ain't rocket science. It's not no Pythagorean theorem. It ain't nothing you got to pull out a sheet of paper and add up the numbers and scratch your head to try to figure out. Tell your neighbor, it's simple as one, two, three. Just believe. Do I have a witness here? Don't be like Soren, Kierkegaard, that Danish existentialist and atheist that said the only way I believe in God is I got to see him with my five senses. But how many of you know, you don't have to always see God physically to know God is real. All you got to do is just look around and you can see his hand everywhere. Nobody but a real God can paint the sky baby blue. Never stood on a ladder. Nobody but a real God can take spiritual cotton balls, hang them across the bosom of a baby blue sky. We call them clouds. Nobody but a real God can give a bird a free meal in a worm and free rent with a nest in a tree. Nobody but a real God can give you two eyes to see his blessings, two ears to hear his blessings, two nostrils to smell to him. Thank you, sir, for the blessing. Nobody but a real God can touch you with his finger of love and woke you up early this morning. Kept the muggers and robbers from stopping by your house last night. I know you thought it's because you got that nine under your pillar. 
And I know you thought it's because you got a little ADT sign in front of your house. But tell your neighbor it was nobody but the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, you just got to believe. Deuces, I'm out of here. But there is one last little thing. The text said uh, that my God uh, is worth uh, talking about. Are y'all praying with me? Uh, the text said uh, that my God, uh, he is worth talking about. Do I have a witness here? Uh, I heard uh, Jesus saying uh, he'll put his money where uh, his mouth is. <laughs> he will uh, provide uh, a poverty of path. <laughs> but there is another uh, little piece. <laughs> and I'm through with y'all. I thank my God. Uh, he has a promise for all people. Do I have a witness here? I heard Jesus saying that whosoever believes in him, here's the promise, should not perish but have everlasting life. Wish I had a witness here. And, uh, in other words, uh, God said uh, that not only uh, will I give you uh, the quantity of life, uh, but I will uh, I give uh, quality of life. Uh, do I have a witness here? And, uh, tell your neighbor, and, uh, not only uh, will my God uh, give you quantity but he will give you quality. Are y'all listening to me? In other words, life is not about how long you live, but life is all about how you live when you was living. Do I have a witness here? I thank God that John P. Key said I'm living I'm living this life just to live again ain't he alright heard Jesus saying if you believe you will have everlasting life shake one hand just shake one hand just shake a hand in San neighbor that means uh, I got quality y'all don't hear me uh, anybody here can thank God uh, that you got quality do I have a witness here that means uh, my quality is not in what I got but it is in the one that gave it do I have a witness here we serve a God uh, that's quality. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he's awesome. Uh, he's all wise. Uh, and he's anointed. Uh, he's a blessing. Uh, the blessing. Uh, and he's the best. Uh, he's cool. Uh, he's calm. Uh, he's a company keeper. Uh, crucified uh, at the cross. Uh, but got the victory at Calvary. Ain't he all right? He's divine. He's delightful. He defeated the devil and defeated his demons. Do I have a witness here? He's Adam's creator. He's Noah's ark. He's Abraham's fate. He's Moses' his rod. He's David's slingshot. He's Isaiah's 
prophet. He's Ezekiel's wheel. In the middle of a wheel, he's Jeremiah's fire. And he's Daniel's zookeeper. Do I have a witness here? He's praying in a starving land. He's water and in dry places. He's a bridge over troubled water. Shake somebody's hand and tell your neighbor he's my way out of no way. He's my way under. He's my way over. And he's my way around. He's my way through. Ain't he all right? But most of all, he's the one that walked another man's street. Rode another man Duncan. He preached in another man poor pit. But he died. Yes, he died for another man's sin. Anybody here can stand on your feet. Help me holler one last time. Early. Can somebody shout early? Sunday morning, y'all know what happened. He's the one that got up with all the power. Around your neighbor, slip your arm around your neighbor, shout neighbor, Merry Christmas, neighbor, Merry Christmas, neighbor, help me sing my song. I've had some good days, I've had some hills to climb. Some weary days Tell your neighbor And some lonely nights But when Can anybody hear Just turn around Just turn around When I look around And think things over All of my good days All of my good days All of my good days Away my bad days I won't Let me hear you holler I won't I won't I won't I won't I won't complain Ain't it alright Ain't it alright If you know he's alright Shout yeah Shout yeah Shout yeah, shout yeah, yeah, yes he is, yeah, yes he is, I know he's alright, I know he's alright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The door is open. Hallelujah. 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 He's worth talking about. I said he's worth talking about. I said he's worth talking about. I said he's worth talking about. Look at somebody and tell them, can't nobody do me like Jesus. <laughs>